Hello traders, this is John Kickleider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. For today's strategy video, I want to update on a important theme that we usually cover on a regular basis, but I haven't really done any kind of in-depth uh, evaluation of this in some time, a broader outlook. But I do want to do a quick update on volatility. Now, volatility, as we've been talking about, can cover a wide range of measures, and obviously the most common one is uh, indicators like the VIX, the volatility index, derived from the S&P 500 options in particular, uh, but we can also look at measures that are more uh, innate in just activity level. Uh, so for example, if we looked at the S&P 500 and we were looking at the ATR, the average true range, which I think is a very good measure of activity. In some measures, it is actually much uh, more adept at pure activity rather than activity with an implication of direction, which I think the VIX has a very clear uh, bearing in those terms. We actually look at the comparison of the VIX to the S&P 500, which we see here. Uh, they are strongly inverse related. Uh, so this is actually the VIX uh, volatility index flipped upside down, the orange, and you can see how that uh, actually traces out very clearly a relationship to the S&P 500, which is where very remarkable considering how high up the S&P 500 is and how little premium there is uh, for the VIX to continue to lose ground, uh, which is in itself, for me, a concern because it insinuates that the low-hanging fruit is certainly been picked, and now we have to climb higher and higher up the tree if we're going to keep uh, generating significant return on that front. But I don't want to just look at the VIX. I want to look at some of the other measures in the VIX and, and get a broader view. Uh, we talk very regularly about uh, volatility in the FX market, but uh, I've noticed over the past uh, month or so, we haven't really covered uh, the volatility measures of some of the other more prominent asset classes out there. So what we're going to do is just take a broader look at this. Uh, but before we get into the other asset classes, First, let's take an uh, overview of the quality of volatility. Now, the VIX is one index uh, that is, uh, once again, particularly oriented towards equities, equities which are a long, only buy and hold kind of asset. Yes, I know there are plenty of short traders out there. I ch uh, short stocks too. Uh, but the primary interest amongst the participants that are behind this asset class are buy and hold, and they have far greater influence. But looking at some of the qualities of this volatility, not only is it extraordinarily low, uh, historically I, I think it's uh, pretty safe to say that we are near a natural floor. We've gone down as low as approximately eight or eight and a half in the history of the VIX. This is a weekly chart. But Expecting that to continue to collapse to those extraordinarily lows is highly unusual. All right, and unreasonable if you're trying to use that as a guideline to how much return potential still exists in the market. But taking a look at uh, other uh, measures, or actually different time frames, uh, this is medium term. This is actually a, uh, a one month time frame in terms of volatility. We can also look at short term volatility. We can do the VXST, which is a short term volatility index itself, uh, that too is extraordinarily low. This has a much uh, shorter life to it. We can also uh, look at the comparisons between the two and get uh, something along the, uh, a curve. All right, so short-term volatility relative to medium term, you naturally expect the medium term to be higher. Uh, in this case, it is, so that is uh, normal, but normal in the, in the sense that we're speaking about here, still extraordinarily deflated. But we can also look at uh, some of the less uh, stable of the volatility measures. This is the VXX. The VXX is a ETF and is based upon the VXST, uh, but it has some issues with it uh, that are primarily because there is a rollover in the contracts of the VIX that it uses to reference price. And that rollover is not well accounted for uh, in this value. We've already seen a number of splits in this ETF in the past, and it's likely that's going to be split again if it doesn't start to get some positive traction in the near future, uh, especially if it, uh, we have a pickup in VIX and it doesn't really count uh, for a significant turn in trend for this particular index. But it does speak to how much 
pressure there is in trying to push forward the short volatility mentality. Short volatility uh, from, uh, well, any options trader uh, out there is one of the primary uh, interests that uh, we have. Uh, that is the income generating approach to trading uh, volatility, expecting it to uh, essentially expire without an extreme event. We can see that uh, appeal in short uh, volatility futures. Uh, we can uh, find that in the net spec futures holder, holdings of VIX contracts, which was updated as of last uh, week uh, through Tuesday only. Uh, and as you can see, we picked up off the record low or record net short, but we are still heavily short VIX futures. That means Traders are looking for a continued, uh, at least hold on the VIX to ex extreme lows, uh, some perhaps even expecting to turn a profit, uh, not necessarily just on the uh, wind down of the clock or taking advantage of the theta or time uh, depreciation. Now, taking a look outside of the quality of just the equity-based volatility index, it is more remarkable that we are getting some significant drop in the other asset classes. This is relative volatility for a variety of asset classes. The blue here is the equity-based measure, and it's benchmarked 12 months ago, so March 1st, 2016. You can see that we've been settled here uh, for, obviously, the VIX around 11% uh, for some time. All right, we've been bouncing around at 11% for a while. But when we look at the other assets volatility measures, they have been dropping pretty aggressively. We have the gold volatility X GVZ, and that has dropped aggressively. We have the emerging market, the blue line here, which has dropped aggressively. Uh, we have treasuries, the MOVE, which is uh, Merrill Lynch's volatility measure, which is dropping, not aggressively, but it is pulling back towards the lows that we had towards the end of 2016. And of course, there's FX. FX volatility measure uh, that I have here, this is actually one that I made myself, is dropping pretty aggressively. Now, you can look at these yourself. Obviously, I made my own FX volatility measure, uh, but you can see a proxy in the CME's own uh, Euro FX volatility index, the EVZ. Look how aggressively, how quickly that is dropping. And that's remarkable considering that the Euro USD has been pretty active around 105. Why is volatility falling? Uh, are we solidifying ranges? Is there a lack of event risk? Absolutely not. There's plenty of event risk and we are getting cons some considerable volatility in price action itself. So the change is not in circumstance. The change, I feel, is in the relationship to other volatility measures, primarily the equity-based VIX. Now, this is not just a consideration for the EVZ. Look at the GVZ. That is the gold volatility index, and that just had a remarkable uh, drop below 13. To give you reference, you have to go back all the way to uh, the uh, August, September uh, months of 2014, where we had some extraordinarily low volatility across asset classes before we get comparable uh, measures. That's extraordinarily low. And again, looking at gold, it's picking up an activity. And in fact, there is a positive correlation between uh, volatility, uh, or negative correlation, sorry, between gold price and volatility. So volatility should be rising as gold drops. That's not happening right now. Why? Once again, there is a strong influence, particularly from equity-based volatility measures. And then we can also look at oil, since we are measuring uh, commodities, uh, that too has seen a significant pullback. Now here, I think that it is well deserved. Looking at actual oil price action, you are in a consolidation pattern for the better part of three months. Uh, this, if there were any volatility measures that deserved it, would be where I think it's, uh, it's well justified. But some of these other measures certainly do not measure up uh, to the expectations that we actually see in the measurements that we're getting from these volatility indicators. So sometimes it's better to look at, or at least compare, the ATR, average true ranges, versus, let's say, the VIX indexes that we see here that are backed out of options. It's also worthwhile looking at the major themes and event risks that are on the docket so that we can see whether or not uh, the circumstances that we are pricing for risk going forward make sense or not. Sometimes animal spirits can draw us far away from what a fair balance is in risk. 
All right. So take a look at these measures and look across different asset classes. You'll notice some intense complacency, not unusual in the market conditions, but it does add to the concern that we should naturally have uh, in how things are currently positioned. Uh, just a sitting deer in the headlights at this point. All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy video tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.